When do you wear your Stanley Cup rings? Well, one I wear all the time, Dan, especially when I'm going out with you because usually it has some gravitas. <laughs> but one of them I can't wear because it's just a little too ostentatious. But that being said, I probably have it in my home. What do you remember about that, that feeling? The first time touching the cup, it's 35 pounds. But when you grab it initially, you're like, whoops. And then all of a sudden, it's like a feather. And just you think, I, the first thing I thought of, believe it or not, were all my youth hockey coaches um, that either supported me or say you have no chance of ever making it. <laughs> so that's, that's, the fir- that's the first thing I really, after picking the cup up, you think about all the people that helped you along on the journey. The first time around, the second time around, you just appreciate the entire moment. You're there and you take it all in. It's, it's not nearly as um, emotional, I think, the second time, especially when you do it back-to-back. It's a little bit different. We were talking about legalized sports gambling. There's a new push by uh, a representative, a Democrat from New Jersey, that they're, they're going to try to get this on President Trump's desk during his term to get legalized gambling. What would legalized gambling do for the sport of hockey? I don't know. I really don't know. I don't, I don't follow it, Dan. I mean, obviously, I'm a huge football fan, and um, I'm not afraid to make a wager on football, but I don't know about the hockey part of it. I really don't. Um, I wish I could tell you more about it. I, I know one thing, and I know you've been so bullish on the national market. I, I think we're developing more and more big-time hockey markets in non-traditional cities, Dan, and I think a big reason why is because of the players that we have, and we really haven't had a bad draft in our league since 1999 that's a long time so our, our league is chock full of players right now uh, that i couldn't tell you back when i was coaching that we had nearly as many good players as we have now in the league well the only reason why i bring up gambling with hockey is that you know now people who might not be as interested uh can bet on you know they love to bet on things and i wonder right. you know with a hockey team in vegas is it just a matter of time before we just see legalized sports gambling not just with you know, hockey, but with with everybody. It's a great point. I don't know, but I think it's a very, very fair point and something that will require some time to break it down. The storyline of the playoffs so far has been what or who? I would say the Nashville Predators have been a phenomenal story as an eight seed and what they've been able to do to get to the Stanley Cup final and their marketplace, Dan, has been phenomenal. Uh, I can't say enough good things about the Nashville storyline. Uh, but I think the biggest thing in this playoff has been, besides the marketplace, has been the elevation of star players. Um, you know, you're seeing it with the defensemen in Nashville. You're seeing it here with Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin. You're seeing it with Eric Carlson in Ottawa. Uh, you saw it with Ryan Getzlaff, obviously, with Anaheim. I think the elevation of star players in our playoff has been phenomenal. Explain the explosion in Nashville. It's, it's an overnight sensation after 20 years. They've built a team that's built to last. Their fundamental principles in building the team was so strong, Dan. Getting defense and building around elite goaltending has always been the forte of David Poyle, their general manager. And you can see it. It's come to fruition. They're the only team, I think, still left in the playoffs that could overcome the loss of their top two centers and still win playoff games. And a big reason why they manufacture most of their offense from their great defense, whether it's Ryan Ellis, Roman Yossi, P.K. Subban, Matthias Ekholm. It's been phenomenal to watch. And I think, really, Dan, when you look at it, Peter Laviolette won the Stanley Cup coming out of the lockout in 2005 with Carolina. He was the first coach to really embrace open ice tactics with the red line out and more of an emphasis on offense. And you could see that almost translate itself to Nashville where he's the current head coach and the way they play. They play and they push from the back end with their defense generating a lot of their offense. He's Pierre Maguire, NHL, NBC, inside the glass analyst. Winner take all game seven tonight. You can see it on NBC, SN at 8 Eastern. Penguins hosting the Senators. Could Sidney Crosby be underrated, Pierre? I don't think he's underrated. I think Sidney's never played as well as he is right now. I think people in the league that actually have to make their living coaching against them or playing against them uh, really appreciate where Sidney Crosby's taking his game to right now. His uh, awareness in face-off situations, his awareness in terms of transition defense, his down-low coverage, his ability to elevate and really support wingers that maybe aren't first-line players. It's been phenomenal to watch his development as a player. I go back to when he was a high school player at Shattuck St. Mary's in Faribault, Minnesota, watching him. And then 
watching him be the youngest player to ever score for Canada at a World Junior in Helsinki, Finland when he was 16. So I've seen the constant progression in his game. The biggest thing to me, though, Dan, the way he's led. It's not just, he always led by example because of his abilities and his hard work habits. Dan, he's leading by example on the bench. Just the way he vocalizes things with his teammates, the way he respects the officials, he's really matured into an amazing leader. Wayne Gretzky talks about this openly where he said, you know, if he played nowadays, he he would have a hard time getting four, uh, 50 goals in a season, that Crosby has a whole lot more talent than he does. So how do you rank players? We love to do this with other sports. We're doing that now with LeBron and Jordan. Can you compare Sidney Crosby to uh, Wayne Gretzky? No, two totally different players. I think Wayne had amazing peripheral vision, probably as good or better than any player that ever played in the game. And I include Bobby Orr that, who I think is probably the best player that ever played. But Mario had a certain style to his game and an ability because of his size. You know, Mario's almost five inches taller than Wayne. So Mario's ability to dominate players with his size and his uh, underrated speed was phenomenal. Sydney's a combination of all these great players, but his sheer strength on the puck reminds me so much of the great Peter Forsberg. I think in Sydney, when you watch him, there's a combination of Forsberg, Lemieux, Gretzky, and probably because of his backhand skills, Brian Trotje. So you put all those players together, and that's what you have is Sidney Crosby. That's how great this kid is. He really is. Yeah, I, it's a shame that Mario Lemieux was not able to play up to his full potential because of uh, illness, injuries, but, you know, having cancer. I, I, I think Lemieux could have been the most dominating offensive player of all time had he stayed healthy. Well, Dan, you're so right on. If you were to ask Wayne that question, he would probably agree with you. Wayne and Mario played together in the 87 Canada Cup, and there's so many. If you get a chance to go on YouTube and look at some of the plays they made together, just unbelievable hockey plays against a phenomenal team from the Soviet Union at that point um, with a, a potpourri of amazing players from Russia and, and then that time the Soviet Union. But I, I would tell you this, uh, I had the privilege of working with Mario for two years and uh, he's done things in hockey that I've never seen another player do. He's almost like LeBron in the sense of how big he was being that skilled uh, and playing, you know, on the offensive end. Uh I don't know. It just he was he was a unicorn. I think I, there's not many guys that size. Ovechkin is is I guess similar in size. Maybe is that a fair comparison as far as just size and athleticism with Mario Lemieux? Yes. Yeah, and they're both right hand shots. The biggest difference though, Mario's ability to dominate the puck in traffic. I haven't seen another player like that in my time in the league. You know, going back, this is 29 years in pro hockey for me, and. I haven't seen another player with his size, his skill, and his ability to dominate the puck, especially in confined areas, as Mario Lemieux. Have fun tonight there, Pierre. Dan, it is great talking to you, and I know you've been on the Predators train. I hope you will find the time to come down to Music City for the Stanley Cup Final. It would be a pleasure and a privilege to take you inside the glass for the warm-up, Dan, and then to take you after the game to a little place called Legends. Can I drive the Zamboni with the Dennets? I, I would have to check with the people in Nashville. But, Dan, I'm telling you, if you went there, you would be blown away by what they've created down in Nashville. It's a phenomenal place to watch a game. I appreciate the invitation, Pierre. I might take you up on that. And uh, have fun tonight. Tell the boys we said hello. I will, Dan. Oh, thanks so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Great That's with you. Pierre McGuire. NHL on NBC Inside the Glass analyst. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.